Hey everyone, welcome to the VitaCast, episode 119. It's me, Tyler Roltoff, your host, alongside Kyle Wakeling. What's up, Kyle? Uh, not too much, Tyler. What's up with you? Just dealing with this extremely hot weather is really all. So, <laughs> that's about it. What about you? Yeah, it's actually kind of pretty hot here, too. Um, I wouldn't even say kind of. It's pretty hot. Um, yeah. So, I'm kind of trying to deal, too. Um, even though it's Canada, unfortunately, it's not igloo weather, um, because I'd actually kind of prefer that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's warm. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I went to the beach today, and I got sunburned really bad. Oh, uh, so you're even more warm because it's, like, baked in you now. <laughs> yep, yep. I took the heat with me. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> no, it's not. It is not at all. But hey, I've got some aloe vera to heal those burns, and I should be good to go. Okay, now no rubbing yourself down while we're doing the podcast here, Tyler. No promises. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm not wearing pants, so I mean, starting off strong. Didn't I tell you, man? I'll get out the stapler. You you won't like that. <laughs> you have yet to produce the stapler, so I have yet to put pants on. <laughs> One of these days, One I'll come out of nowhere days. and just bam, staple to your knee. <laughs> Ouch. Anyways, <Yeah. laughs> this is the Vita cast. Let's talk about the Vita, shall we? That sounds like a plan. So, we've been away a while, so what have you played in this break we had? Oh, Tyler. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't exactly remember the last day we talked and, and did this here. <laughs> I, I couldn't even give you the date, so I'm not sure exactly all of what I've played, but I know I've played quite a bit. Um, and, and let's start with the classics. I know I've played Hot Shots Golf since the last time we talked, um, because I was kind of comparing it to this golf game that I got on PS4 that's called the Golf Club. And, um, even though they kind of control different, they're, it's very much the same kind of game, and I realized immediately why I liked it. It's one of those, you know, jump in, play, kind of easy to learn, but hard to master kind of thing. Yeah. So... I'm, I'm liking that, and I played some Hot Shots Golf to compare them. Um, so yeah, played that. I also played a little Tetris. Uh, I'd been away from that for a while, so I wanted to get back into that. Unfortunately, I couldn't record any of that, as I keep hoping they, they're going to put out a patch, but they haven't for PlayStation TV compatibility, so played it on the good old Vita, and it was good, but I need to play more. <laughs> a little out of practice, and the ghost mode was kicking my ass. Um... Also played Dead or Alive Extreme Three Venus. I just finished going through with each of the girls and go, taking them on a little vacation. Um, I haven't unlocked the one mode yet, which is kind of weird because I've played a fuck ton of this game. So uh, I'm hoping it unlocks soon because I'd like to, you know, do everything before I write the review. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've been playing quite a bit of that, and oh, I just love the beach volleyball. It's awesome. Um, <laughs> Also, I know I've played some uh, Mega Tag Mansion Blanc uh, plus Neptune versus Zombies. Um, I, I played a bunch of multiplayer since I put up my review, so I know I've played that um, since we're mentioning the review coming up, so I won't talk too much about that. Uh, what else have I played? I played some San Ranker Estable versus. I got uh, one of the additional packs that I didn't have for levels, so I kind of poked at that. I didn't really complete them, but I will. I think I'm going to record that, so that'll be cool. Uh, what else have I played? Oh, I played the Odin Sphere Lethal Seer English demo that just came out, so that was cool. Um, I had already played the Japanese one, so I pretty much, you know, had it down pat, other than the weird things that you can throw that are like potions. I didn't know what they were, but now I do. <laughs> um, so I played a bunch of that. And I put up some uh, videos, one on the Games with Boobs channel and one on the V Lounge's Lounge Play channel. So if you're looking for some, you know, examples of gameplay, it's up on, on the channel there. Um, damn. I know there's got to be more, Tyler. Can't <laughs> think of. That's I got Bullet Girls 2, finally, but I haven't started it yet, so that'll be next on my to-do list. There you go. Uh... I know there's something I'm missing, but I'm going to kick it over to you, and hopefully I'll come along like you usually do and remember later on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've only played a couple things. Um, I played a little bit of uh, Severed, 
Got a little further in that. I still need to play a lot more of it, though. I've been so busy that I haven't had the chance to dive into it as much as I'd like, but yeah. <laughs> I, I played a little bit. Still loving it. Um, I also played a game that I haven't played in a very long time. My, the last time I had a save on it, I think it was 2014. I can't remember, but I don't even know when the game came out. It was um, Akiva's Trip. I played that, and I got two trophies in it, and I was very excited. Very nice, very nice. It came out in 2014, so you haven't played it since it came out. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. So so that was nice to play that a little bit. And then I think I played a little bit of uh, Center and Kruger Estival Versus as well. Still need to play more, and I still need to beat uh, Shinobi Versus. So, you know, I got problems. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's about all I played. I didn't play as much as you nearly, so I need to catch up. Good news, Tyler. What's that, you remembered? Yeah, I remember what else I played. What was it? I played Never Ending Nightmares, and I got all the trophies, and at first I was like, you know what, fuck this game, because <laughs> it, it's kind of one of those things where when I was going through it at certain points, I was just like, why am I even doing this? Yeah. But now having played it and thinking back on it, um, I kind of liked it a little more than I thought I did. It, it's not the greatest game, and it's kind of... It's almost more of an experience than a game, so it's kind of weird like that, but I think I enjoyed it. I think it was worth playing through. It was, it was odd, though. <laughs> and, and there's lots of uh, little jump scares, so if you're into horror shit, I guess that's, that's you know, for you. But <laughs> it, it was just kind of odd to me, and a lot of the time I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I played that. <laughs> very nice, very nice. All right, well, we should jump into uh, the reviews from this week, shall we? Sounds like a plan. All right, so we got a few here, so let's get right into it. First up, As Ken 2, The World Beneath, reviewed by Reese. They gave it a 2.8 out of 5 and said, As Ken 2, The World Beneath is an okay puzzle game. It doesn't push the boundaries in any ex exciting way, but it doesn't do much wrong either. So if you like a decent match 3 puzzler, then you would, could do worse than to show some love to As Ken 2. And it's interesting, albeit brief story. So it's a match three game. I doubt Kyle's interested. I'm not interested. So I definitely suggest reading the review if you're interested. Right, Kyle? Absolutely, because, yeah, no idea. <laughs> All right, next up, what do we got? All right, the next review that has come out is Stranger of Sword City. It was reviewed by Jenny, and she gave it a 4.3 out of 5, saying, quote, Stranger of Sword City is great fun, but be warned that it is tough. However, even if you die, you will soon come back to it. You can't help but to think that maybe with a slightly different party or different weapons, you'll get slightly further next time. Just try not to get too upset if your favorite ninja meets a sticky end. End quote. So, sounds like it's one of those games that, despite being hard, just one more try, just one more try, and then, you know, hours later. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I actually wasn't too overly excited, I guess, for this one um, going in. But after reading Jenny's review and some of looking at some of the screenshots she's tweeted at me, I think I'm down for it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I think I have this game. I just haven't played it yet. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> I, I know. All right, next up. We've got Mega Teg Mention Blanc plus Neptune vs. Zombies. This was reviewed by our very own Kyle, and he gave it a 3.6 out of 5, and he said, If you're looking for an introduction to the beat-em-up genre, look no further, as Mega Teg Mention Blanc plus Neptune vs. Zombies is a prime choice for just that very purpose. That said, anyone else may have a hard time finding a challenge, and the story just isn't all that cohesive or memorable, end quote. So, Kyle, take it away. Alright, so this game is definitely one of those things where it's fun in the moment, but if you're expecting the entire game to be some sort of, you know, building to something, or there's some sort of amazing story that's hooked you, it's not. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny at times, there's some fan service, um, you know, it, it's Neptune and the girls, so if you've, you know dabbled in any of their games, you kind of know what you're going to get uh, from the visual novel style scenes anyway. Um, as for the gameplay, it's 
it's like a slower version of Senra and Kagura, basically. Um, <laughs> it, it's not as uh, flashy, I guess, and it's definitely not as fan servicey. Um, but it's, I don't know, it's there. And it, if, if you are looking to get into beat 'em up games, or you haven't played one, you want to know if you like them, um, or you just kind of like Neptune games and stuff that has to do with their universe. Then you'll definitely like it, but it's not something that's there to offer you like a big challenge. The only real par- hard parts are um, some of the multiplayer missions, and maybe near the end of the game you might have a little bit of trouble depending on how you built your characters up and you know distributed your playing through the characters because you can obviously play as one character and level them up completely or spread it out. Um, I, I went with Tamsoft because she's the breast-tacular one, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> I ended up with a um, over-leveled character, and I used pretty much the same partner, so our, our link was maxed out, and the whole game was kind of a cinch. Um, I didn't even really mean to plow through it, and I just kind of ended up doing it, so there you go. Um, if, if you're you know a beat-em-up veteran, you might want to stay away, but... Otherwise, I don't see any reason not to play it if it's somewhere in your alley. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. All I right. enjoyed my play, but it wasn't anything special. So definitely read that full review if you're interested. Find out. More. Absolutely, and there's some gameplay up on the channel as well. So, boom. All right, you're set. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to our last review of the well, not week, but last review of since we last talked to you. It's Downwell, and it was reviewed by Timmy, and he gave it a 4.5 out of 5, saying, quote, Downwell is one of the best games I've played this year. Everything just feels like it completely fell into place for this title. The price is so cheap, I would have gladly played double. The music is spot on and perfectly complements the 8-bit graphical style, and the gameplay does what any great arcade game should do. It makes you come back for more and more, time after time. This is a video game, a proper old school, hard, rewarding video game, and it deserves your attention, end quote. So a lot of high praise there for Downwell. Um, I do know that he didn't like, I believe, the tape mode. Um, The controls were kind of wonky for him, uh, so he he preferred the other mode. You might want to read his review if you're kind of wondering what the hell I'm talking about. Um, (laughs) But... Yeah, it's one of those games that it kind of interests me, but I've never really played anything like that extensively, so I don't know if, you know, it's something I'd get and I'd be like, well, I'm never playing this again, even if it was, you know, okay. So, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about it, even after reading their view and hearing everything people have to say. What about you, Tyler? Yeah, I don't know if I really care too much. It sounds interesting, but... It's another one of those games where it's just like, do I need it? Is it really <laughs> that amazing I need it? I don't know. <laughs> it's just not grabbing me right now. I still have a new beat Akiba's Trip, Kyle. 2014. Still beat. <laughs> you still have beat Shinobi Versus, Tyler. That's way worse. I know. It's such know. a better game than Akiba's Trip. <laughs> well, you know, people make mistakes, okay? <laughs> Tyler, you've been making a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Anyways, let's move it along. Those are all the reviews we've got, so feel free to head to the site, check them out, and see if there's any games you should be picking up. Uh, let's head to those... Well, but there is none, Kyle. Why are the question marks? Okay, no. I, yeah, I somehow blanked on that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had made a mental note to to fill that in, and it just escaped me. All right, well, do you know what came out recently? Uh, that I don't know. <laughs> oh man, oh man, Kyle. I I have lists, but they don't work like that. <laughs> do you remember when you just like? Do you remember like maybe five seconds ago when you're like saying I make a ton of mistakes? And here you are. One time, Tyler. One time. <laughs> here you are. I'm a busy man. You're over there just twiddling your thumbs. Do, do you hear that, people? <laughs> you hear all these excuses he's making. He can't just. You want more excuses? <laughs> call, call this number. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So I didn't get them. Um, what has come out this month? Well, Downwell came out this month. I know that. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, all right. And Mega Tag Mansion, and um, um, didn't Stranger yeah. of Swords didn't come out too? Uh, sure. Because <laughs> I don't remember us ever talking about that. Actually, no, maybe it did come out. It didn't, I don't know. It's been too long, Kyle. Stop questioning. It's me. been so long. It's all your fault. I don't it know. is. It <laughs> always is. Well, if I'm going to blame somebody, i got to blame you because you're almost never around, so then how are you going to refute what I say? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I just turned on my my Vita, and on May 30th, this last Tuesday, we got Delta Strike First Assault, One Piece Burning Blood, One Piece Burning Blood Deluxe Edition, Paranautical Activity, and some PSP games. <laughs> uh, the week before, or week after that, the 23rd, Lo- The Lost Blade 2, Downwell, Zombies, The Last Survivor, Letter Quest Remastered. Oh, these are going into different days. That was the 16th for the Letter Quest Remastered. On the 9th, Mega Tag mentioned Blanc plus Neptune for Zombies came out. And. Yeah, I think everything else is we've caught up to. Actually, no, Corridor Z. As can to the world beneath the never-ending nightmares and rage gaunt we never talked about releasing. So yeah, there we go. Those are all the new releases that I know of. <laughs> so yeah, that's North America, by the way. So yeah, North America. We, we aren't looking at Europe. You guys can screw off this week. Ooh, wow! <laughs> Boom! Beautiful? Harsh words. <laughs> he lays down the law. No holding back. That's right. That's all right. right. <laughs> Sometimes we have to make concessions, and we're cutting Europe. <laughs> yep. On. All right, let's get into the news. We've got quite a bit to go through, so we we're kind of dying over here by the heat. So we want to get through this as quick as possible. So let's do it, right, Kyle? Absolutely. All right. First up, Koei Tecmo recently updated the official site for Atelier Sophie, giving us loads of new details about the game's alchemy system. First up is the alchemy system in the game. The player can gain new re- uh, recipe ideas through battle, gathering, events, and many other ways. The player will have a reference book they can look at which will help with finding the conditions for coming up with a new recipe. Once the conditions have been met, the new recipe will be available for use. Some of the recipes are directly related to restoring Pleshta's memories. The conditions for these recipes will also be displayed in the book, the same as normal recipes. Once you have come up with a recipe, the player will need to synthesize it, requiring the player to pick materials and the cauldron to use, all of which will affect the quality of the final outcome. Through the synthesis process, you can add new traits and increase the attributes of items. The player is free to... Oh, there goes dogs. Ignore the dogs. Free to experiment with the alchemy process with many different factors contributing to the outcome, such as item order and placement on the board. As the game progresses, you'll need better items to keep up. There are a few new techniques that will aid the player in the synthesis of better items. First is the Wonder Stimulant. When this is used, the player will be able to collect better than normal materials. Next is to fight more powerful foes. The stronger monsters in the game will drop rarer materials, and battling these foes repeatedly can be a good way to gain the materials necessary. You can also achieve better results by increasing your alchemy level, allowing you to transfer more traits alongside other benefits. Atelier Sophie, the Alchemist of the Mysterious Book, will be out on PS4 and Vita on June 7th in the U.S. and June 10th in the EU. Logan Feith has posted up some news on the PlayStation blog regarding the PS4 release PS4. Oh, eh, of four-sided fantasy, and a reply in the comments has us worried about its Vita-bound fate. When some news went on, up on the PlayStation blog earlier today regarding four-sided fantasy coming to PlayStation 4, whoever wrote this got a little worried right off the hop. From my, from their understanding, we knew it would be coming to Vita since March of last year, but not a single mention of Vita was made in the entire post. Now it seems that the worries were very much founded, as a reply to one of the comments on the European blog from developer Logan Fith looks to confirm. Quote, Unfortunately, we had a, a change of plans and publisher, which means that currently we can only confirm the PS4 and PC versions of the game. We're not ruling it out yet, though. End quote. In a world where PlayStation Vita cancellations and vaporware are now a re- fairly regular occurrence, even if they're still a very small percentage, this comment doesn't inspire much faith. These days it seems that a lot of people can't even seem to get their game on Vita when they're trying, and it really doesn't help if you're not actually trying at all. If you want to see Four Sided Fantasy on Vita, I suggest you let Logan Feith know, sending your hopes and dreams to his Twitter account at L 
O underscore F I underscore. Otherwise, I fear that you can simply drop the four sided bit and just call it what it is. Ha ha ha. Anyways, next up, Koei Tecmo has announced a Tokoden 2 demo for Vita and it's already available on the Japanese PSN. Clocking in at a 1,617 megabyte download, the Tokoden 2 demo is compatible with the Vita as well as. PlayStation TV. In addition, the PS4 demo is getting an update to enable crossplay, which in turn means more players to play with as the demo has online features. The official website for the game has now released further info on the characters with accompanying screenshots and story information, so let's start with the story. The game is set in the Meiji era when the world has destroyed by when the world was destroyed by the awakening, the surface of history that had gone unbroken was ruined, and the underside of history, led by the evil spirits of the rivers and mountains, began to swallow the world. The large demon Oni were seen in the north and began to head south, destroying all human civilizations Excuse me. Uh, in their wake. Warriors known as Slayers were sent to Yokohama to eradicate the beast attempting to defend the city from their brutal attacks. Whilst the battle was happening, a giant oni fell from the sky and a single slayer was swallowed by an, an oni gate that was opened. The story begins ten years later with a slayer awakening on a beach with their memory erased in the Mohoroba village. As for the newly introduced characters, we've got Toya. He is a commanding officer in charge of the samurai unit. His weapon of choice is a long sword and he has he is on bad terms with Yokuma. Yokomo, you, whatever. As he wanders, he b picks up outsiders to further strengthen his powerful military army. Ma Mana Dezuro, the rule abiding and overly serious, is a vice president in Toya's army. Her weapon is a bow and an arrow, and she is known as the merciless vice commander after Shinzengumi, vice commander Hijikata Toshihizo. She's not all that tough, though, as she has a weakness for cute, fluffy animals. The new Oni are Dai, Dai bat, bat, Barachi. This is a huge beast-type Oni. Its massive tail has a sword-like growth, which is where it na its name derives. Guhen, Guh, Guhen. Comparable to a wolf, this Oni is a medium size and has a big mouth. It also has a powerful tail, which it uses to create strong wind and thunder attacks. Additionally, it's been announced that pre-orders for the game will start May 17th in Japan, a 10% discount applying if you purchase before July 13th. If you prefer the digital version, however, you should know you're, you'll also be getting ex an exclusive Toro Tsana, Sanada Yukimuro Matama as a bonus. Lastly, we're said to inform that Tokoden 2 will now be releasing for Vita on July 28th in Japan, the previous date of June 30th, just not working for Koei Tecmo. Yeah, that demo's good, too. Woo! <laughs> There's this, like, really cool, uh... It's like a whip with, like, blades on it. It's it's sweet. You should try it. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> moving on. Compile Heart has updated the official website for upcoming Dungeon Caller, Mary Skelter, and the latest update gives details on the game's battle system. The protagonist, Jack, will fight alongside a maximum of five girls from the Chishiki Girls squad. The battles are turn-based, and you will be able to perform actions based on your speed. If you look at the screenshot on the site, you'll see that the turn order is displayed on the upper left of the screen. Good to know. If all five of the Chishiki girls are defeated, then it will be game over, as Jack doesn't have the ability to fight. What a wuss. In the dungeons, <laughs> there are monsters known as Marchin. If you attack their weaknesses, you can perform overkills, which cause a large amount of of blood to spray from their bodies. The girls then have to decide between madness or licking off blood. If the girls are continually sprayed with blood and it's not cleaned off, then they will automatically enter genocide mode. In genocide mode, the girls' stats are increased and they change appearance and behavior. They'll also be able to perform a move called genocide skill, which you can use to decimate your enemies. Alternatively, you can lick off the blood with the lick skill in battle to get the other girls to lick the blood off their allies. By doing this, you can activate the Spirit Blood skill. This helps to recover and strengthen your party. It will also move them away from triggering Genocide Mode. To lick or not to lick, that is the question. Divine Prison Tower Mary Skelter is due for release in Japan on October 13th. Koei Tecmo has launched their Almost No Material edition of Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Venus on the Japanese PSN. 
thank the gaming gods for Japan time being far in the future, as despite the fact that it wasn't quite the 16th, they've already released their demo-like free-to-play version of Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Venus. Featuring the sole selectable character Katsumi, you can take on the island's various activities, aside from the casino bits, and interact with all the other girls just like normal. All you have to do is download the 933 megabyte demo via a Japanese PSN account. Speaking of Dead or Alive, if you've got a Japanese PSN account, you might want to grab this new theme featuring two adorable ladies that have appeared in Vita games. Featuring Hatsune Miku and Marie Rose in the same visual format as the wallpapers they released a while back, the new Project Diva X and Dead or Alive Extreme 3 crossover theme doesn't have any bells or whistles like custom icons or music, but it will fill every page of your video with a single cute picture of the two girls hanging out on the beach. To grab the theme, head to the Japanese PSN store. It's free, too. Next up, Spike Chunsoft have taken to the PlayStation blog to reveal their upcoming RPG Mystery Chronicle One Way Heroics will be releasing this summer in North America. The 2D adventure centers around a kingdom which is being swallowed by a destructive wall of light. Better keep on your toes as constantly moving forward is the aim of the game here. Don't stress about saving the townsfolk or even the king, just get to the point and save the day. As you would expect from a roguelike RPG, each quest will present you with a different procedurally generated world. RPG fans will be happy to hear that rather than narrow corridors and tight corners, One Way Heroics gives you a whole world to explore. But be warned, for those who like to explore every corner of the world with every action you bring the deadly wall of light one step closer. This means that you're constantly forced, scroll forward, linger too long, and you'll find yourself a goner in no time. It's not all bad news, though, as even the, though you'll lose your progress if you do perish, you'll be able to save the gear you gain through the Dream Vault. You can also earn points to unlock new perks, NPCs, and classes, which there are 20 to choose from in total. Also, be sure to look out for the appearance of familiar faces from Danganronpa and Shirin the Wanderer. Mystery Chronicle One Way Heroics will be crossed by for PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4 when it releases in North America this summer. We await details of a European release date, but we'll of course let you know when and if we get one. PlayStation Japan has revealed a brand new limited edition PlayStation Vita that Yeez fans will certainly want in their collection. Priced at 20,980 yen plus tax, this Yeez 8 Lacrimosa of Dana themed PlayStation Vita Slim uh, features a large size Yeez logo as well as a Goeth C map and a game preface quote. It's available in either pearl white or black, wait, pearl black or white, and currently purchasable via the Japanese Sony store. Also announced as a limited edition based on the RPG Caligula, and this time there will be four different designs to collect. The four themes are Catharsis Cath Cath Flower, Moo, Extreme, and Corolla. These special edition Vitas will release alongside the game on June 23rd in Japan. Also included with the models will be three exclusive Caligula themes, as well as the original design packaging. Each will cost 20,980 yen plus tax. It's time to dust off those steampunk goggles and strap on a pair of trusty re revolvers as Steam World Heist is headed to Vita early next month. In this month. <laughs> this month. <laughs> this month, man. <laughs> In a recent post and subsequent update to, ve uh, to developer Image and Forms website, we have finally been gifted with the release date of critically acclaimed SteamWorld Heist, the spiritual successor to one of the, the very well received indie handheld games, SteamWorld Dig. The Vita version will cost £15.99 or €19.99 or €19.99 US dollars and offer cross buy support between Sony's platforms. And for those of us residing in either Europe or Australia, we can pre-order it for 15% off now on the PSN. Fear not, my stateside buddies. That's us. You will also have access to this promotion when the game launches. As an added bonus, the Outsider DLC previously released for SteamWorld Heist also, or shall also be available for both PlayStation versions at, versions at launch. SteamWorld Heist launches on Vita on June 7th in North America and June 8th in Europe. The release date for Dynasty Warriors Ikutsuden has finally been announced for or during a live stream. The game will launch on August 3rd on PS4, PS3, and Vita in Japan. The game will cost 5,800 yen on Vita. 
Koei Tecmo will also be releasing a Treasure Box limited edition, the contents including the original soundtrack, a Dynasty Warriors 15th anniversary character creation book, a long poster collection, a code for the Yakuda costume for Lee Zai, Z, whatever, in-game, and a copy of the game, of course. First print versions of the game will also include a Dio Chan costume for Lee Zaya as well. Stay tuned for the to the Vita Lounge for more news about Dynasty Warriors Ekutsuden as we get it. And if you're up for it, grab the game when it hits Japan August 3rd. All right, kicking on. The pirate-themed RPG Genkai Toki 7 Pirates is set to release in Japan on August 4th. To get us prepared for this release, we've been treated to information regarding various gameplay elements, starting with dungeon exploration. Whilst navigating, whilst navigating these areas, you'll find plenty of loot. This will be mainly in the form of treasure chests, but also in the form of glittering items scattered around. Combat in the game involves four party members battling in command-style turn-based battles. When fights begin, the player member's turn order is decided. You can easily see what the order is as it's displayed at the bottom of the screen. The chest. As we've explained in previous articles, a unique feature to Seven Pirates is that of the chest growth system, which characters will develop together. The bigger the character's chest, the more powerful they will become. By using the PlayStation Vita touchscreen, you can touch each character's chest to alter the size and softness. The system can increase character stats and allow them to acquire new skills and make the chest parameter change. When chest parameters change, so will the stats and bonuses gained by the character. The different parameters are as follows. Size, upswing, softness, height, spread, and springiness. For those of you perhaps not all, not at all sure about how to properly work with each character's chest, here's a handy guide as to how each action will change the shape. Poke, you can tap the screen. Rub, you can drag your finger on the screen in circles. Clap against, you can flick the screen. Pull, you can drag in whichever direction. Grasp, you can pinch in. And mash, you can pinch out. There's also a view mode where you can admire your handiwork. Apparently, you can also confirm their jiggliness. No, seriously. <laughs> are you hoping to get your hands on Genkai Toki 7 Pirates? Well, are ya? Miracle Positive has released their version 1.02 update for Airship Q, and it just got a whole lot more attractive to importers as a result. Those looking for English PlayStation Vita titles to import can add another to the list of possibilities as pixel art platformer Airship Q has just gained English as well as simplified Chinese, traditional Chinese, and Korean language options as a result of its latest update. Plus, if you're actually using an Asian region or Japanese region account, you'll also be able to pick up the bonus add-on Pheasant in Celebration, available from now till June 16th. Airship Q is available via physical import or, if you got the account for it, straight from the Asian or Japanese PSN stores. Xseed has launched five new PlayStation Vita themes in North America centered around the squads of Senran Kagura Estival Versus. If you're looking for a way to decorate your PlayStation Vita with your favorite shinobi, you're in luck. Xseed have released five new themes and a bundle if you want them all, containing the five squads available in their latest Senran Kagura Vita release. Grab the squad specific PlayStation Vita themes for $2.99 each US or the whole lot for $9.99 US. Senran Kagura Estival Versus is available now on all major regions, but these themes have only been added to the North American PSN store. We'll let you know if Europe gets a similar set, but that would be up to Marvelous Games, not Xseed. Following on from the footage of a multiplayer boss battle, Square Enix has now given out more details on the multiplayer component of Dragon Quest Heroes 2. First up, and rather excitingly, Dragon Quest Heroes 2 will support both crossplay and cross-save. Cross-play works between all platforms, and save data can be also transferred between all three versions. The cross-play should help to keep a decent online community for all platforms, so don't feel you have to get the home console version just to join in with friends. There will be two types of multiplayer in the game. Players can team up together and take on the game's story battles. You'll be able to recruit friends to help with tough stages. The other players will replace your normal party members, and you can register up to three friends before a battle at Rika's Inn. The other type of multiplayer is known as the Space-Time Labyrinth. Here, up to four players can take on this challenge where you'll be fighting various enemies and will obtain ver varying rewards once it's cleared. 
The labyrinth can only be taken on once the player has obtained the labyrinth map item. You can also take on the labyrinth with your AI party members or on your own if you so wish. As a nice bonus, there will be several characters returning from the first game as free DLC exclusively for the space-time labyrinth dungeon. There are, they are as follows. Yengis, Nira, Bianca, Lucius, Aurora, King Doric, and Sorrow. It's also been revealed that there are special monsters that will only appear in the space-time labyrinth dungeon known as the space-time guardians. You can take, you can get a look at them on the site. Next up, we received more details regarding the game's story and what part of the prophecy plays in the game. According to the backstory, a great war broke out after 1,000 years of continued peace in the Seven Kingdoms, and the form of the mysterious enemy power has gradually become clear. The royal families of each country claim that there is a person wandering from place to place, creating chaos with a horrible prophecy. Nobody knows what this stranger's goals are, but we know there are four divas in the way of the protagonist finding out. The four divas are boss class monsters with a level of power far above the others. Only a true hero will be able to take them on and live to tell the tale. There's Duran. Duran uses fire based attacks and is capable of turning into a dragon. Me Shadow uses its forearms to attack as great speed cutting down anyone before them. Hellkaiser is a capable is capable of using high class spells and can charge anyone who dares to get close. And finally, Pru Pruslas will attack by breathing fire and sweeping away anyone close enough with a with its giant club. Dragon Quest Heroes 2: The Twin Kings and the Prophecies End is due out in Japan May 27th. So that already came out. <laughs> Thanks to an early look at Famitsu, we now have a whole host of new information for the new Atelier title. Atelier Ferris, the sequel to Atelier Selfie, has been announced for release in Japan by Gust and Koei Tecmo. The full title seems to translate to Atelier Ferris, the alchemist of the strange journey, and the platforms have been revealed as well, with Vita and PS4 making the cut. As for the release date, it looks like we'll be seeing Ferris this fall. The the protagonist of the game will be a pure girl who has never left her village and has never seen the outside world. Similar to previous titles, after an unexpected turn of events, she discovers alchemy and decides to explore the world herself. As a common occurrence in Atelier titles, choices made by the player will determine how the game will play out and who will use your alchemy against. There will be new and exciting places to explore, including great plains and snowy mountains. The theme of this game will be a journey with players encouraged to create their own story. So that's a brief introduction. Here's the game's plot starting point. In a remote, mysterious area, there's a small underground town. This town was dug out from the side of a mountain, meaning that no wind can enter and sunlight is rarely ever seen. Knowing the season is extremely difficult. A young girl resides here who dreams of freely walking out into the world. This isn't as straightforward as it, as it would seem, however, as a huge iron door marks the only entrance and exit to the town. Only a select few are authorized to travel through, with the young girl's slender arms making it impossible to open. She sadly watches people come and go through the door, hoping and dreaming of the day she will be able to leave. That day, that day may just have come sooner than expected, as the girl discovers alchemy, sparking a chain of events that will change her life forever. So now you know the plot, let's introduce you to the two main characters, starting with our protagonist. The protagonist of this title, she's a 15-year-old girl who lives in a mining town that is closed behind an underground gate and longs for the outside world. She has the special ability to find the location of ores, which she uses for mining work. Since she has never left her town before, she has a strong dream-like admiration for the outside world. She finds out about alchemy after a certain event and decides to journey into the vast world. She's calm and quiet, but has a backbone. Ferris's older sister and traveling partner. She's an excellent hunter and one of the few that are allowed to leave the town. She likes to spoil her younger sister, Ferris, and that's something that's known throughout the town. Knowing Ferris's desire to leave the town, she secretly feels sorry for her sister's current situation. Now you've been introduced, here's a little more insight into the story. Ferris's only connection to the outside world is through an adventure book and, of course, her sister, Leanne, who is allowed to leave the town. Leanne makes a deal to allow Ferris to leave the town. Ferris's 
granted permission to leave and explore but under one condition. She must become a fully-fledged alchemist within a year. Worried for her sister, Leanne follows Ferris on her journey. There are many different types of, of uh, areas to explore in Atelier Ferris, ranging from cold to tropical zones. A nice touch to the game is that Ferris's outfit will change depending on each area she is in. So a big woolly coat for colder climates to less clothing in warmer areas. For various events throughout the game, there will not just be one method to completing a task. There are multiple ways that a task can be completed, with different choices made by the player leading to different outcomes. In previous Atelier games, there has been a central town where the player can form can perform synthesis. Atelier Ferris will not have a main town. Instead, you will have to use a traveler's bonfire or set up a tent for a portable atelier. Similar to previous titles, synthesis will be done in a puzzle-like fashion where you combine items you've collected to create new, more powerful, powerful items. There will be a new Super Dreadnought synthesis feature in Atelier Ferris. With this, you'll be able to make amazing things much too large for a standard alchemy pot. As regular players will know, there are many different items you can find while exploring, but you can also find yourself up against large beasts on your travels. Using your traveler, travel companions and items you have synthesized, you'll make battle with, battle with the monsters who may even drop more powerful items if defeated. And finally, we have details of the additions that... Oh, I'm yawning! Oh, that snuck up on me. Ah. And finally, we have details of the additions and what they include. Premium box. Copy of Atelier Ferris, The Alchemist of the Mysterious Journey. Atelier Ferris Visual Book. Uh, Rare Tracks CD, a B3 size special illustrated cloth poster, three Atelier Ferris clear cards, special Ferris costume and theme DLC, the special collection box exclusive to Amazon and the Gust Shop, features all the same things except it also includes a set of nine crystal paperweight cubes, special collector's box exclusive B2 size illustrated cloth poster, and DLC for special collections box exclusive theme. There you go, all the information you could possibly want at this early stage. Atelier Ferris, the Alchemist of the Mysterious Journey, is coming to Vita and PS4, though we await a release date. You can expect the first trailer after the Nico Nico livestream on June 13th. That was a long one. Next up, 5BP is bringing a game based on last year's Plastic Memories anime to PlayStation Vita sometime in the future. After protagonist Tsukasa Mizukaki finds a job at the Android Giftia Manufacturing and Management Company SAI, or SAI Core, uh, he is assigned to the Terminal Service Division, a part of the company that recovers Giftia, Gif, Giftia who have reached the end of their lifespan. There he meets Isla, 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 I don't remember how to say that name, I don't care who he works with on a number of jobs. Before long, however, uh, they end, the end of service approaches as well. That person's end of service approaches as well. The game features a route where you can allow them around called schedule mode, and it you'll be able to set up your schedule on a monthly basis. The actions you select will alter the course of events in the story. Other routes are available, which follow sub-characters. These routes will include more original stories. Interesting. Plastic Memories will be available October 13th in Japan, priced at 7,344 yen for the retail version and 6,480 yen for the digital version. A limited edition version is also available for 10,584 yen and includes an Isla SD figure. Uh, early buyers will receive a promo code to download the China Dress costume and will also receive an, uh, the Doki Doki No China Dr Dress date scenario. All right, I just got to make a comment on your name pronunciation. <laughs> it, it, it's gone way downhill, Tyler. Yeah, it, um, it used to be that you would, you know, attempt them. Now you get, like, halfway through it or just say it, like, wrong and know it's wrong and just be like, ah, whatever, and just move <laughs> on. It, it's it, it's unacceptable. But we'll come back to that later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on with this news. Curve got in touch with us recently to let everyone know the release date for their upcoming 10 Second Ninja X. Curve Digital and Four Circle Interactive have announced that we'll be able to get our hands on this hopefully nimble ninja title July or July 19th, sorry, worldwide, with all six worlds and 60 levels of it available at your fingertips 
for quick boats of Vita based ninjutsu. Each level is a puzzle which you must be quick, smart, and skilled to solve in just 10 seconds, and doing so will earn you another one, or either one, two, or three stars based on the outcome. But that's not all, 10 Second Ninja X also features mini games, unlockable costume changes, a ghost mode, a brand new hub, and of course, enhanced visuals over the original. The developers have even stated that when they were making 10 Second Ninja, it was their first game, so it didn't turn out 100% as expected. And this one's the game they really wanted to make. Big hype reason there, guys. Cross by between PlayStation 4 and our lovely Vita's, 10 Second Ninja X will be $9.99 US, £7.99 or €9.99 when it hits in just under a month and a half. Atlas recently got in touch to let us know about their North American Odin Sphere Leaf this year demo, which is now available on the North American PSN. Odin Sphere Leaf this year tells the story of five different protagonists, each fighting for their own faction in a war against the others. As such, these stories intertwine and the protagonist of one may seem like the antagonist of another. Odin Sphere Leaf this year releases June 7th in North America and June 24th in Europe, but those connected to the North American PSN can get a taste of what's to come right now. I don't know if it's official, but I've heard that next week Europe is getting a demo, so hopefully that's true. I don't know. Don't quote me. Moving on. <laughs> the sequel to last year's five-star visual novel, Steins Gate, will be hitting PlayStation Vita in the West. Last year, Steins Gate was released in the West to rave reviews. In fact, it was the highest rated game from the Vita Lounge in 2015, with Charlie giving the game a 5 out of 5 rating. Now, it's been revealed that the direct sequel, which is set in the same time period as the original, Steins Gate Zero, will be heading to the West in 2016. The original Steins Gate had many bad endings, and the sequel follows Rintaro Okabe after one of the game's less than positive conclusions. Upset by what has happened in this ending, he discovers a way that he may have a second chance thanks to an AI program named Amadeus. In the sequel, however, Rintaro uses Rhine, a messenger ex inspired sorry, by line, to influence the plot by communicating with other characters. The PlayStation Vita version of the game will cost $49.99 in the US and £34.99 in the UK. Excited? Well, you're in luck, as you can pre-order the copy via Rice Digital right now, despite the fact that we still await an exact release date. In a posting on the PlayStation blog, Jamie Lemon, Senior Product Marketing Manager for Minecraft, revealed details of the new minigame as well as announcing it will be coming free to owners of Minecraft on Vita. Kyle is excited. The mode will be titled Battle, as it is a competitive multiplayer free-for-all deathmatch mode. In this minigame, players will have to use randomly generated resources to win, which are found in chests within specially designed PvP maps. The last man standing is victorious, but if you fall, you'll still be involved in the action. After being defeated, players will return to the battlefield in the form of a bat. This allows you to fly freely around the map, even distracting players if you are into such dirty tactics. Team Minecraft also stated they will be supporting this new mode with map pack add-ons in the future. On Vita, Battle will allow up to four players to fight it out uh, once online and will be available for free to all owners of the game in June via an update. Not your cup of tea? Then you'll want to keep checking back to TVL as Battle will be the first of many new minigames to release in the near future. On the 30th anniversary of the Dragon Quest franchise, Square Enix took to the PlayStation blog to announce the news that they'll be aw been awaiting been waiting to hear. Dragon Quest Builders is coming digitally to PlayStation Vitas in North America and Europe this October. Dragon Quest Builders' story is a what-if story set in the aftermath of the original Dragon Quest. In this timeline, the hero from DQ1 accepted a deal with the evil Dragon Lord rather than slaying him, plunging the world into despair and darkness. The few inhabitants of the land that survived have been scattered throughout the world, no longer able to understand the concept of creativity and settling for a life of sifting and scavenging through what remains in the ruins of the land. It is here where Dragon Quest Builders begins, when the protagonist, who can either be male or female, is awoken by a guardian spirit and given the title of the Legendary Builder. This makes you the only person in the land who has the knowledge to create objects through both imagination and combination, meaning it is up to you to restore former glory to this land and that has been ravaged by darkness. Gameplay-wise, 
You can expect Dragon Quest builders to combine the classic Dragon Quest RPG formula with the endless possibilities of the crafting available in Minecraft to make a sandbox action RPG where only your imagination is the limit. If you want to build something, there are only three steps to achieve your dreams. Plan what you want to build, gather re the required resources, begin building to create your masterpiece. Unlike Minecraft, Dragon Quest Builders has a storyline, so don't worry about this game losing the magic that a Dragon Quest narrative brings. There will be plenty of side quests and NPCs to meet to ensure that this game still offers a full RPG experience. Are you excited for Dragon Quest Builders to be coming west, or are you pouting in the corner because it's digital? You can't have everything, you know, and we're just glad it's coming at all. Woohoo! Taking to the PlayStation blog, Judith Pai from NIS America announced uh, the release date for the localization of Yoma, Yoma Wari. Yoma Wari is a game about a little girl who loses her dog and her sister on the same night, having to look for them in a creepy, twisted-looking interpretation of her hometown. Uh, it's been a title that, ha that whoever wrote this, has been very interested in since we saw the first trailer, but is now even more interested since it was revealed as coming west. Here's a bit about the game via the PlayStation blog. Quote, Yomawari Night Alone features a unique blend of survival horror with stealth action gameplay. Along the way, you'll find all sorts of objects from keys to slippers to cat biscuits, some of them vital to solving the mystery of the town and its eerie inhabitants at night, while others useful to distract evil spirits when they attack. As the story unfolds, more answers will lead to more questions, and the open-world environment of Yomawari Night Alone allows for maximum freedom to wander anywhere at almost any time, but remember that everything has eyes and ears. With every step around the corner or into a dark hallway, alleyway, you will not only need reflexes to outrun bloodthirsty monsters and spirits, but also wits as you outsmart the ones that strike faster than you can blink. Letting down your guard for even one moment may spell instant death. Only the silence of the night, the unsettling chirping of crickets, and your own lonely footsteps will accompany you as a danger lurks around every corner, waiting to strike without warning. End quote. Have we gotten your interest yet? Because we have one more great piece of news to add to that announcement. The game will not only be coming west as a physical copy, it'll be bundled together with Hotaro no Nakai, the Firefly Diary, two games in one. Look out for Yomawari Night Alone with, when it hits North America October 25th and Europe October 28th. And make sure to grab the physical combo pack if you want Hotaro no Nakai, the Firefly Diary as well. All right, kicking on. We're kind of getting towards the end. <laughs> <laughs> Ease 8, Lacrimosa of Dana, is set to release in July, and ahead of its release, Nihon Falcom has revealed details of two new characters, as well as further details regarding the extra skills system. The first new character is Meralda, an optimistic person who works at her husband's restaurant in the Greek region. She looks like a young beauty, but is in fact 32 years old and has six children to look after. She's rather handy at all types of housework, which allows her to use a large kitchen knife for survival when she drifts ashore. As a grand cook, she will also use her cooking skills to help keep the survivors fed. Rhea. Once again from the Greek region, he is the heir to the rich Dior family. He's an 11 year old troublemaker with a rather precocious way of speaking. He crossed over to Zandaria, keeping close to his father, but decided to return ahead of time, taking the Lombardia on his own. He managed to survive hanging onto the livestock Picard that were on the ship, and then arrived to Siren Island. It'll be interesting to see how rare affairs, as he's forced to tend to the crops and Picard. With such a privileged upbringing, doing chores such as this may make or break young Rhea. So that's a brief introduction on the new characters, now let's have a look at the extra skill system. To perform an extra skill, you'll first have to fill up your extra gauge. This is done by performing a certain amount of regular attacks. Each character has their own unique extra skill, which is basically an extremely powerful attack. Using one causes a lot of damage, covering a wide area. you want to really think before using this one, however, as it will cause your gauge to return to zero. Here's a couple of examples of characters' extra skills. Excalibur. This is for the character Adol. It brings out a huge aura from his sword, which is several times its length, allowing him to go on a rampage using all his power and extra range. Glimmering Ice Blade Dance. This is a spin attack, which uses the character's crescent blades to destroy enemies. Then, They then cause large icicles to appear, which drop by on nearby enemies. 
Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Dana is set to release on PlayStation Vita July 21st in Japan. A post from an official Saga Twitter account has revealed that Square Enix is working on localizing the PlayStation Vita version of the latest game. With the mobile, Android, iOS versions already out and the Japanese versions released in March, Square Enix at Saga25 Kawazu Twitter account has announced that they're currently working on the PlayStation Vita version of the Romancing Saga 2 localization, asking us to be patient for it. Here's the tweet in full. At Saga25 Kawazu said, quote, Hello world, we've released Romancing Saga 2 English version on iPhone Android. For PS Vita, we're working now, I want your patience, please. End quote. But that's not all. A few hours after that tweet went live, another tweet was posted talking about the demand for a physical copy of the game, quote, ROM version, end quote. Here's the gist of what the account had to say in that regard, according to a machine translation, quote, Once we tweeted the topic, er, the topic of the English release of Romancing Saga 2, there was some demand for ROM version. So I have a question for all the Vita owners out there. If the download version is a cheaper price and is more quickly released, then what good is their releasing a ROM version? End quote. So there we have it, Romancing Saga 2 on its way, and they want to know why or if you want a physical copy when the digital version would be cheaper and quicker. Are you down for the wait, or the extended wait for the physical, or is this announcement too little too late? Famitsu has revealed an Akiba's Trip successor and it's headed to PlayStation Vita. Details are scarce at the moment, but Famitsu has posted the announcement of Akiba's Beat, a successor to 2013's Akiba's Trip 2, which was brought west as Akiba's Trip, undead and undressed in late 2014. It's coming this fall to Japan, and we've got some more information for you. First up are details on the setting. The title once again features a high-quality recreation of Akihabara, though this time the protagonist and his friends seem to be caught in a time loop where Sunday everything repeats. The action bit of the game plays out in dungeons, which are the embodiment of this delusional time warp. Battles in these dungeons begin by touching an enemy symbol, and the combat skills of those in battle are modified by special headphone equips. The next bit of detail lays out some of the main characters, starting with the main character himself. His name is Asahi Tachibana, and he's a 20 er, a 19 year old, sorry, college dropout who only attended for a year before settling into his current neat, that's not an education, employment, or training lifestyle. Next up is Saki Hoshino, an 18 year old who moved to Tokyo to attend vocational school. She works together with Pinkun, her familiar, to destroy the quote world of delusion, end quote. Come across Asahi on her quest. Her familiar Pinkuin seems to think it's pretty, but it's not. Then there's Yamato Hongo, a 16 year old prank target who thinks he's cool, but is actually more cute, and Ryu Mamose, a 14 year old living in the area. Akiba's beat is currently 75% complete, and as stated, launches this fall in Japan. Hey, Xseed, you know we want this, right? Right. Thanks, XD. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, the release date and silver of sliver of additional information has been revealed for the upcoming Fate Extella. First up, the latest Famitsu has revealed three new characters and their classes for the action title, including Sab Sab Saber Class Artoria Pen Dragon Ruler Class Gian Dar Dar Diark. And Lancer class Elizabeth Bathory. But that's not all. They've also revealed the release date for the title, November 10th in Japan, as well as some pricing. 6,980 yen for Vita. Must be fate, right? Huh? The latest from Famitsu has revealed that Rico Love Blue Ocean and Rico Love Gold Beach are headed to Japanese shores August 25th. Prices at 6,980 yen each. That's not all, however, as Famitsu has also revealed the pre-order bonuses for different retail establishments. Depending on where you'll buy it, you'll get a different swimsuit, and you can check out our site for more details. August 25th isn't too far away. Who's hoping for an English version? Kyle is. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's been a long time coming, but Axis Games just announced that they'll be bringing the conclusion to the X-Blaze visual novel story to Europe. It's true, X-Blaze Lost Memories is officially headed to Europe. The title has having been released in North America last August and Japan last April. The sequel to X-Blaze Code Embryo, it sees you taking control of a girl na- called Me and going on an adventure to save someone you love, all the while accompanied by a mysterious character called Nobody. If it sounds crazy, that's because it is, but in a great way. I gave, or Kyle gave the title a very worthy 4.3 when he reviewed it, saying, quote, X-Blaze Lost Memories is not so much a sequel as it is something that enhances the first game's story in every way. It features an enjoyable narrative, lovable characters, and a unique way of presenting the big picture, something visual novel fans will be sure to appreciate and, and enjoy. Just don't forget to play Code Embryo first, end quote. So when all Europeans be... So when will Europeans be able to get their hands on this fun bit of this bit of fun very soon? Explays Lost Memories launches in Europe June twenty first. Tactical RPG Grand Kingdom is almost here, and if you're interested in trying before you buy, we've got good news, as a light demo will be available very soon. The light demo will give players access to the first two chapters of the game. You'll be able to take on one war, either invasion or defense, every day, and contracts with any of the four great nations. You'll also have access to one troop and ten units. Services available for use include the blacksmith, trading post, and national shop, while character classes available include the hunter, medic, fighter, and witch, as previously stated. As for when the demo will be available, it'll go live on the 7th in North America and the 8th in Europe, save data transferable to the full game at any time. Grand Kingdom releases June 17th in Europe and June 21st in North America, but you can get an early bit of play in next week when the demo drops. Will you be testing it out, diving in, or avoiding this one? I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) Moving on. Robert Boyd, co-founder of Z-Boyd Games, recently announced on the PlayStation blog that Cosmic Star Heroine will be finally getting a release as a cross-buy product for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita this summer, with a very generous price tag of only $14.99. Players can look forward to an epic experience in which you will be able to, quote, uncover conspiracies, travel to exotic planets, Fight unspeakable evil and save the galaxy. End quote. Are you excited for Cosmic Spider Heroin? We promise to keep you updated as we hopefully get more info about this game's release over E3. And the last bit of news Bandai Namco has released a new update for Extreme vs. Force, which offers an enhanced free battle mode as well as three new mobile suits. Mobile Suit Gundam Extreme vs. Force has been updated to version 1.04 in the Land of the Rising Sun, and with it comes the Enhanced Free Battle Mode. This means that you can now select Consort, Plain, Exclusive Mobile Suits, and some Mobile Armor as CPU Controller characters, further upping your team-based arsenal. As for their Mobile Suit Editions, they are as follows. Extreme Gundam Type Stithia Excelia from Gundam Exa, piloted by Stesia Awar, and the price is $2,500. Tall Geese 2 from Mobile Suit Gundam Wing, piloted by Trizy Krushanada, price $2,500. And Gundam Versago Chest Break from After War Gundam X, piloted by Shaggy of Frost, also price $2,500. Mobile Suit Gundam Extreme vs. Force is already available in Japan and Asia, but it's headed west July 12th in North America, and sometime later this year in Europe. If you just can't wait though, there's an Asian English version available for import at various online retailers. And that's the news, Tyler. Yay! Yay! We... Did you just do a backflip there, Tyler? I did. Did it sound you like did. it? I-, I-, I couldn't tell. Oh. Okay. I was just guessing. Okay. <laughs> Awkward. So yeah, lots of news, but now we're caught up, so you can all breathe a sigh of relief because you know everything that you need to know about Vita stuff. Right? Yeah. Right? Right? Because yeah. you read the site too, right? Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> moving on. Um, yeah, what are we going to do here? <laughs> 
It's been too long, hasn't we, it? We, it has been too long. It's been so long that the April store top downloads hasn't been mentioned. Um, but <laughs> just in in the sake of saving you us reading all that shit, um, go check it out on the site. Number one in North America is Severed, and it's number two in Europe, so yay. Uh, there's some other good showings as well, but yeah, Severed got some some love, and I'm loving that. So That's check cool. it out. Um, I assume we'll be getting maze numbers soon, so check back for that, hopefully next time, which hopefully won't be too long. Yeah. Right, Tyler? It won't be too long. Yeah. Um, anyways, so moving on to the talking points, which is announced release games we're looking forward to from the month. <laughs> um, <laughs> what looks good, Tyler? Well, I'm really excited that Dragon Quest Builders is coming west. So. They're really hyping that up as being something that has purpose rather than, you know, the Minecraft mindlessness of it all. Yeah. Aren't they? They are. I, I like that. It, it, it kind of actually makes me want to play it. So I don't know. Maybe you'll end up playing with me on that one. Ooh, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. But yeah, no Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> um, other games. I feel like there's something here that I was looking at that, oh, Yeez 8, I'd love to play that. That sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. There's not there's a ton of news here, but there's not really much that I was like super hyped about. Oh, Tokoden 2. There it is. There's another one. I knew there was something else. <laughs> yeah. But that's really about all I've got. What about you, Kyle? Well, uh let's go through it here. Tokoden 2, um, after playing the demo, um, which, like, I, I haven't had too much time with it, but I've played it enough to know that it's a much more interesting to play game than the original and Kiwami, I think. I don't know, I haven't played Kiwami, but <laughs> how it looks, anyway. Yeah. Um, it, it seems more interesting, so hopefully it will, you know, drive me to play that more, because the the two getting games were always, like, it was fun to play with friends, but it wasn't a game that I felt like I wanted to play on my own. So yeah. it didn't it didn't have that drive in me. Like even Soul Sacrifice, which is like a very similar type of game, I just wanted to play that on my own, like all the time. It was just so addictive. I don't know. Tukadin didn't have that hook for me, even though it had all these great elements. So I don't know. It didn't stick. Whatever. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, that, that's looking interesting. I'd definitely play some Tugadin 2, and I'm enjoying the demo so far. Um, Mystery Chronicle, uh, One Way Heroics. I, I'm not sure about that, but it sounds like it might be something that I could be interested in, so I'm, I'm keeping my eye on it, to say the least. Um, Mary Skelter, uh, every time I hear about that one, that sounds more interesting. The whole licking blood mechanic, I'm, I'm down. I don't know. Seems weird, but I'm down. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's seeming interesting. Um, what else do we have here? There, there's so much. Ease 8, of course. We've talked about that a million times. I want that. Um, Odin Sphere. Uh, super hyped for that. I played the hell out of the Japanese demo, and I've played now the English demo through like probably six or eight times, so... It's, it's fair to say that I've got a lot of hype for that, and I kind of wish we got a review code for that, which we didn't for some reason, but I don't know. Hmm. We'll see. Maybe I'll get it if I can scratch the dough up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Steins Gate Zero. I love Steins Gate. It wasn't as perfect to me as Charlie said it was, but it, it was very enjoyable, and I, I got stuck in it once I actually started playing it and got past you know the first chapter. Um, so I, I'd definitely be interested to play that again. Although, I, I'm unsure about this route that they're taking with this whole sequel, but not a sequel thing. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but, but definitely interested from the outside right now. Um, Dragon Quest Builders, I, I am slightly interested. They keep playing up, as I said, that, you know, it's not just mindless element, which is kind of dragging me towards it. Um, but one that I really am excited for is Yomawari. I've liked the look of that one since we've seen the first trailer. And a lot of people said it was kind of mediocre, but it just seems like one of those creepy games that, you know, I'd be into playing. And it's it's horror, so, I mean, it's one of those things that I'm naturally drawn to. So, I'll probably play it, whether I 
end up liking it or not. I hope I do. Um, <laughs> what else we got here? So much announced. Um, oh, Rico Love. I'm hoping that comes over, although I doubt it will. The fact that there's two games and that it would be more to translate doesn't bode well. Yeah. Um, Grand Kingdom. Uh, I have to play that demo. A lot of people played the beta, said it was meh. But um, people who I know who played the beta and didn't like know anything going in enjoyed it. So it's kind of weird. Maybe the way that they marketed it was wrong, and you know people are getting the wrong impression. I don't know. Um, but I'm gonna play that when the demo, light demo, comes out um, next this week, next week, whatever. Um, so I've got a little interest in that, and yeah, that looks like you know the bulk of it. Lots to talk about there, so, you know, lots of games, even though there was 30 things, there's probably 10 things in there that I am looking forward to or kind of interested in. Not bad. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah. All right, well, we've got listener mail to Very good. go into. And we got a couple things, well, I think a couple, maybe one or two. Um, okay, we got two. <laughs> so, I'll save the, uh, nah, I don't care. Anyways, first up, from Twitter, at Dark Dream Eater, they ask, they ask, are HDMI mod, <gasps> are HDMI mod vitas worth it, and are they reliable? So Kyle, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, from an outside perspective, they seem like it to me. I don't have one, so I don't know. Why don't you tell us, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was hoping you would know. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, okay. my Vita is not an HDMI mod Vita. Mine is uh, USB modded. I plug it into my computer, and then I have a program on my computer that displays the screen. So there's no audio. The audio would still come from my Vita. Um... It's been pretty reliable. It's had its moments where I feel like things are messing up and it freaks me out because of how expensive it is. But uh, for the most part, they're pretty reliable. It's whether or not you want to drop nearly $500 on a, a on a Vita. So so yeah, it's, it's up to you, man. Good luck with that. It was a big <laughs> decision for me. <laughs> And next up, oh, thank you, by the way, for your question. Next up from Twitter, we've got another one here, at Silent, Silentius Being? It's silent and then I-O-U-S and then being, all one word. And he, uh, uh, bleh, he asks, since you're about halfway through the year, or since we're about halfway through the year, Vita Game of the Year so far. Oh, man. I'm leaning towards Severed. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm really leaning towards Severed. That was the thing that kind of caught me off guard the most and dragged me in the most. And just, like, the actual experiencing it was the most satisfying, I guess. And and exciting. Um, just because it was something completely new and I, like, there, I had no idea what to expect. Even though I'd seen trailers and all the stuff, you don't know until you play it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to have to say severed. I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I'm, I'm up there in the percentage. What about you, Tyler? Yeah, I, I'm leaning on that as well. I mean, I haven't beaten the game, so what I've played, I've really liked, but yeah, I don't think there's anything really that jumps to my mind that would compete against it at the moment. So I'm going to go with severed as well. There we go. Boom, that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, that's all we've got for questions this time. Um, yeah. Kyle, what are we going to check out? All right. So there is pretty much Dick All on sale that um, I've played and can recommend to you directly. 
Although I have to say, um, I think Dra- yeah, Dragon's Crown. Dragon's Crown is on for fifteen dollars right now in North America. And even though I haven't played that, just from playing their other games, I know that, that it's going to be quality. And what people have said, it's quality. So you might want to pick that up. Um, but I haven't played it, so yeah. Um, <laughs> aside from that, however, um, I, I don't know. There's there's so many good things that you could pick up, really. Um, but I'm, I'm going to recommend something kind of off the wall here. And that's uh, Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Venus. Obviously, this would be an import title, or you'd have to get, you know, a another region PSN to to you know get access to it. Um, but I've had quite a bit of fun for you know what this is. It's it's a very easy to pick up um, mini game uh, set that you're playing with these girls from Dead or Alive. And uh, yeah, I've, I've literally sat here for probably. I know a good couple sessions of like five hours long just playing beach volleyball over and over and over and over again. So like um, for how simple and, you know, whatever you want to call it, this is because it's not like a full fledged game. Um, It's very addictive. It's very time consuming. It's something that's really easy to jump into. And there's beautiful ladies like I mean, they're digital, but you got to love it. (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> so there we go that's my recommendation alrighty go check it out people let's get out of here Kyle alright if you've got listener mail or comments contact us via media services at thevitalounge.net you can find everything we talked about today on thevitalounge.net including any mentioned news, reviews, featured articles and store updates we also have a community forum and a magazine. The magazine is available both digitally and in physical copies via patreon.com slash the Vita Lounge. You can follow us on Twitter at the Vita Lounge. I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. We're also on Facebook. Just search the Vita Lounge. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, Lounge Play, youtube.com slash Lounge Play. Now with more videos. So be sure to hop on there, subscribe, and watch some videos. This podcast is available on Google Play, iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, YouTube, and via direct download on the site. So go ahead and check those out and rate us. Let us know how we're doing. That is it for episode 119 of the VitaCast. All right. What? I got a couple notes before we go. Oh, jeez. Note one, some awesome videos you should check out. Odin Sphere Leaf this year, demo gameplay. it in 2 demo gameplay. So go check those out on the site. You can also check out the Games with Boobs account because there's some Dead or Alive Extreme 3 stuff up there that you might want to have a look at. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, and I've actually started a Patreon. So if you guys are interested in supporting me and getting more content... Um, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Teflon Tactics. And yeah, I won't push it too much, but there you go. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Alright, that's it. Let's get out of here. Indeed. To the Vitas.
Bye.